okay model analysis so in our past session we already discussed about this analysis and also uh, we use this model analysis for a, a certain analysis like free free run and uh, uh, you can also use the model analysis for a starting point for an analysis like uh, dynamic analysis like uh, transient and uh, harmonic analysis also okay so first uh, let us uh, discuss about what is model analysis uh, like always uh, we have a dedicated theory session for this so this is a theory session and also uh, followed by you have a practical session also how to do the model analysis on ansys workbench itself okay a model analysis determines the vibrational characteristics of a structure uh, which includes that uh, natural frequency that is omega n and mode shapes okay so we will discuss about the uh, terms like uh, natural frequencies and mode shapes and uh, most of you guys are well aware of what is natural frequencies why because we already discussed about that uh, what is natural frequency why we need to find the natural frequency uh, for a st certain structures or any component uh, in our free free run session itself okay so a model analysis is helpful uh, is helps to find the uh, natural frequency as well as its mode shapes so mode shapes is nothing but how the structure is behave in that natural frequency so that is what mode shape means uh, for a structure or machine component okay so it can also serves as a starting point for an another or more detailed dynamic analysis such as uh, transient dynamic analysis and uh, harmonic analysis and spectrum analysis okay so while doing a transient structural analysis uh, i always said that there is a two methods to do that analysis like uh, one is full method and another one is mode superposition method so we actually seen about that full method so we don't actually use a mode superposition method so for mode superposition method our model analysis is a base analysis okay what is that base analysis first we need to uh, do the model analysis and then we need to transfer the entire data to the transient dynamic analysis and we can perform that so it will solve the problem more rapidly so it's a quick technique uh, we already know that the most uh, uh, i mean the component is more aggressively behavior uh, behaves in the natural frequencies so to find the exact location of the stress and strain variation we use the natural frequency as an input so by using the modal analysis so in our upcoming session we also discuss about that uh, mode superposition method so the mode superposition is uh, not only applicable for transient dynamic analysis it also applicable for the harmonic and uh, spectrum analysis itself also when we do a harmonic analysis we uh, definitely discuss about that uh, mode superposition method how to do that so by coupling that modal analysis and uh, uh, some other vibration analysis so these are all uh, vibration analysis uh, followed by that model analysis a model analysis is a kind of vibration analysis and uh, so harmonic and spectrum and random response it's also a vibrational related analysis so these three analysis uh, three to four analysis are uh, embedded with each other so first we need to find the model uh, i mean perform the model and then we go for harmonic and then you have to go for spectrum analysis itself okay so good the natural frequencies and mode shapes are important parameters in the design of a structure uh, for a dynamic loading condition why it is very important so uh, in our uh, so in our past session we discussed about that uh, natural frequency is important so whenever uh, you are applied so if you have a component like this uh, it may be anything so like you have a, a cube or uh, plate structure whatever it is uh, if you apply certain forces on this component in this component so due to this force there is an uh, excited uh, vibration is generated so that vibration has some frequencies okay so excited frequencies so these frequencies cannot be matches with the natural frequency of this component so all the component has its own natural frequencies like uh, it may have a one or two or three more than five ten twenty so you have a infinite number of natural frequencies for a particular component uh, it's depend upon the range so uh, what is the range you need to provide for that component okay so that uh, applied force frequency cannot be matches with any one of this uh, natural frequencies otherwise if it is matches with the omega n your uh, problem will your component will be destroyed like uh, our resonance will be happened 
okay so that is an example for this why it is uh, very important to find the natural frequencies uh, so what I will do here is I just uh, show you uh, an example so when I open Google and search for uh, Tacoma bridge failure so you will get this uh, Tacoma bridge collapse uh, like this so also you can uh, search for its uh, Wikipedia so Tacoma narrow bridge uh, it's around 800 meters uh, length uh, so it is actually made for a uh, uh, 500 to 800 people's uh, traveling per, I mean uh, at the same time but what happened here is it just break uh, by a wind so which is actually uh, blow at a speed of 64 kilometer per hour okay uh, why does happen so what happened here is uh, see you will notice that this is the uh, breakage of that uh, bridge so due to that uh, applied wind so due to the wind uh, the applied force yes uh, here you have the bridge so due to the force so it can be moved like this it's called mode shape so so when we uh, when the force is applied there is a excited frequency so that frequency is exactly matches with the natural frequencies okay so that is why it is actually break so uh, our excitation is or i mean resonances happened over on this bridge so you should be make sure that uh, whenever you design a component always be sure uh, the applied frequency applied force which generates a certain frequency cannot be matches with that natural frequencies so that is very important so that is what our natural frequency and mode shapes are very important factor in a designing of a structure and dynamic loading condition okay you can also perform a model analysis on a pre stressed structure such as spinning turbine so spinning turbine is a one of the example in our google classroom uh, but apart from that, uh, what is that uh, pre-stressed structure? Uh, I already you know that what is pre-stressed condition. While we doing a eigenvalue buckling analysis, we perform that analysis by a pre-stressed condition. That is, uh, we need to assign the loads and supports in a pre-stressed condition, like a static structural or a transient structural one. And then we need to transfer the entire data to the uh, next analysis that is uh, maybe a modal analysis or eigenvalue buckling analysis you have to couple the two analysis itself like also here you can perform the modal analysis by standalone as well as a pre stressed condition okay so it's up to you uh, which you are interested in that so in uh, while doing standalone method uh, modal analysis doesn't include any forces or uh, velocities rotational velocity itself it only have the degrees of freedom like you can uh, apply a fixed support or rotational supports or uh, you can lock the displacement translations whatever it is but you can't apply any forces so these entities cannot be available in the modal analysis itself okay so that is what uh, they give the option to uh, do the analysis on pre system condition also okay so I will move on to the next slide uh, yep. so if there is a damping in the structure or a machine component that system will be uh, converted into a damping model analysis you can also include the damping factor that is a uh, k lambda so this is lambda is the damping factor so if you have the la uh, damping factor you can also include that in model analysis itself for a, a damped model system a natural frequency and mode shapes are become more complex so when you include that uh, damping factor uh, you know that a uh, damping is a, a factor which eliminates that uh, vibration itself so your natural frequency and mode shapes uh, calculation will be more complex okay so this is a simple example so uh, this is what our uh, simple I mean uh, beam structure so let's apply a, a fixed support over here so we already seen this example in our uh, eigenvalue buckling analysis itself so we apply a force on here itself like this so due to the force you will get a mode shape like this that is a eigen vector 1 vector 2 vector 3 and vector 4 so you may get a different shapes so for the each and every shapes you have a different number of natural frequencies that is omega n so for 10 hertz 
you get a shape like this for 20 hertz you will get a shape like this if it is a 32 hertz and 36 so uh, there is no need of any constant interval of natural frequencies uh, it may be between so far maybe the first natural frequency is 10 hertz and the next may be a 12 and the third may be a 32 and fourth may be a 92 so there is no certain uh, level of intervals at all so uh, maybe it's a consecutive one or else they have a larger gap between the first natural frequency to the next natural frequencies okay like also a component cannot be failure on the all the natural frequencies so among the uh, 5 to 10 or uh, 20 to 30 natural frequencies uh, any one or two may be a most dangerous one so to find the most dangerous natural frequency we do an analysis called harmonic analysis it's a one type of uh, it's an another type of uh, vibration and analysis we also discuss about in our upcoming sessions okay and uh, i'll move on to the next slide that is points to remember the rotational velocity load is uh, not available in the model analysis when it when the analysis is linked okay good so when you are doing a coupled analysis or a pre stressed condition uh, you can't apply a rotational velocity in modal analysis itself so if you want to apply that uh, rotational velocity you have to uh, define that in the static environment okay so this is very important and uh, pre stressed modal analysis uh, requires a uh, performing a static structural analysis first okay uh, yep so uh, always uh, whenever you need to perform a pre system model analysis either you need to uh, assign the load on static environment if it is a variable load you can use a transient also in the model analysis you can use the initial condition object to the point of uh, static structural analysis uh, which includes a uh, pre system effects okay so it is uh, again the same thing okay and i hope you will get this point so this is what uh, we try to explain here uh, and this is our problem statement uh, we will uh, see how to solve this problem by using answer solve points in our upcoming video and hope you like the video and we will meet on our next video